The universe is a beautiful place, right? Well, sometimes nature can be just as brutal as it is captivating. That's why in this video, we're going to be discussing the most terrifying planets you could come across in the Milky Way. How do we identify planets? Before we get into the list, it's worthwhile to understand just how scientists manage to detect planets that reside thousands of light years away. There are a few different ways to identify planets, but the two most commonly used are the transit method and the wobble method. Transit method. The transit method is the method that was used by the Kepler Space Telescope. It involves taking very precise measurements of the brightness of stars over time. Using this method, several measurements of a star's brightness are made over some time. These are then examined looking for a dip in the brightness. This is typically a pretty tiny dip, but the instruments used are extremely sensitive and can detect very, very small differences in brightness. A single drop in brightness isn't conclusive, but if several dips occurring at regular intervals are observed, it suggests there may be a planet passing between the star and the observing instruments. Further observations help refine things further, including orbital distance and size. One major downside of this method is that the planet must pass directly between the star and the observer, and this means that the orientation of the orbit of that system must be just right for us to see it. Wobble method. The wobble method works a bit differently. Very precise measurements are made of the star's spectrum. If an object is moving away from the observer, its spectrum is shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. If it's moving towards the observer, the shift is towards the blue end of the spectrum. The wobble method looks for a very, very small shift in the spectrum, which are caused by the gravity of a planet tugging the star slightly toward or slightly away from the observer. This doesn't require the orientation to be perfectly aligned. Again, Further observations can refine the measurements enough to help astronomers determine the size and orbital distance of the planet. The refinements in both methods allow us to make educated guesses as to the composition of the planet. This also allows a tremendous amount of math, but it does allow for a lot more information than you would think was possible. There are some other methods available, but these two are the most effective so far. Interesting Planets Kepler 70-B the Kepler mission is specifically designed to survey our region of the Milky Way galaxy to discover hundreds of Earth-sized and smaller planets in or near the habitable zone and determine the fraction of the hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy that might have such planets. One of these potential candidates, discovered by the Kepler telescope, was in a small planetary system in the Cygnus constellation, Kepler 70-B, caught the eye of astronomers mainly because of its extreme conditions. Kepler 70-B is a rocky exoplanet with around half the mass of Earth with a slightly smaller radius. It has a surface temperature of over 7,000 Kelvin, the hottest known surface temperature of any exoplanet. While the precise temperature is not known, it is expected to be hotter than the surface of the Sun. The exoplanet has an extremely short orbit with an orbital period of around 6 hours, but this isn't the shortest time in the universe as we will see later. The reason for this planet's extreme conditions are still not confirmed, but scientists believe that the planets Kepler 70-B and Kepler 70-C were most likely gas giants that spiraled inward towards their host star. This led to the formation of a red giant, which vaporized much of the planet except for parts of their solid cores. So, when you look at Kepler 70-B and its little brother Kepler 70-C, you're essentially looking at cores revolving around a red giant. HD 189733-B Let me introduce you to HD 189733-B, a planet that appears as a stunningly attractive one, but it's probably the last place that you'd ever want to visit in the universe. HD 189773-B is slightly larger than Jupiter in our solar system and is located about 63 light-years away from Earth. The planet gets its deep, beautiful azure color from the planet's strange atmosphere, which is made up of mostly silicate atoms and particles. The wind speeds on the planet can reach as high as 5,400 miles per hour, which is around 2 kilometers per second, or over 7 times faster than the speed of sound. HD 189733b orbits its host star once every 2.2 days at an orbital speed of 152.5 kilometers per second, and temperatures there 
can also reach way over 900 degrees Celsius, making it a poor prospect for extraterrestrial life. But I'll explain what's so horrid and frightening about this planet. The planet rains glass sideways with its unbearably fast winds. If this exact storm were somehow to occur at the equator on Earth, it would travel around the Earth in just a mere five and a half hours. If that type of storm were to occur on Earth, that would be terrifying, and virtually everything in its path would most likely be destroyed by the intense wind. PSR J1719-1438b You've probably heard that it rains diamonds on Saturn, but what if an entire planet was made of diamonds? Such is the nature of PSR J1719-1438b, which orbits the pulsar PSR J1719-1438. Both of them are about 4,000 light years from Earth. This body is as massive as Jupiter, but unlike Jupiter, or any other known gas giant planet for that matter, it is composed of super dense crystalline carbon. The best explanation for B's existence is that it's the remnant of the core of a stellar partner, otherwise almost entirely absorbed by its larger partner, now a pulsar. In simpler terms, it once used to be a star, whose debris took up a second career as a planet. After the star died, its core became a white dwarf, but the dwarf decided not to take a beating and stabilized itself just enough to keep its carbon core. Since this planet is mostly composed of pressurized carbon and slightly contaminated with oxygen, it essentially makes it one giant diamond. Its orbit is so small, it completes its year in a little over two hours. That's smaller than the radius of our sun. That close to a pulsar can't have an atmosphere since any gases would be ionized and blown off by the intense gamma and X-ray irradiation from the pulsar. It fits the official definition of a planet in that it's spherical under its gravity, orbits a star, and has cleared its orbit. However, it's also thought to be the core of a companion star of the pulsar that had its gaseous material swallowed when it got too close to the star that eventually exploded to form the pulsar and or blown off during the explosion. The pulsar itself is only about 12 miles across as opposed to the 40,000 miles for the planet, meaning the planet is bigger than the star it orbits. Proxima b. At only four light years away, Proxima Centauri b is our closest known exoplanet neighbor. Proxima b is a super Earth exoplanet that orbits an M type star. Its mass is 1.27 Earths. It takes 11.2 days to complete one orbit of its star and is 0.0485 AU from its star. Its discovery was announced in 2016. Proxima b encounters bouts of extreme ultraviolet radiation hundreds of times greater than Earth does from the sun. That radiation generates enough energy to strip away not just the lightest molecules, hydrogen, but also, over time, heavier elements such as oxygen and nitrogen. But people started to get excited when there had been speculation that the James Webb Space Telescope had detected the signature of artificial lightning on the dark side of Proxima b. This brought people's hopes up, and for good reason. Although Proxima b orbits much closer to its star than Mercury does to the Sun in the solar system, the star itself is far fainter than the Sun. As a result, Proxima b lies well within the habitable zone around the star and has an estimated surface temperature that would allow the presence of liquid water. It is unlikely that life, if present, is developed in the form that we know of. Major concerns that count against the presence of life are related to the closeness of the star. For example, the gravitational forces probably lock the same side of the planet in perpetual daylight, while the other side is in perpetual night. The planet's atmosphere might also slowly be evaporating or have more complex chemistry than Earth's due to stronger ultraviolet and X-ray radiation, as we discussed earlier. Assuming that the Breakthrough Starshot project is successful, a gram-scale space probe about the size of a postage stamp, each equipped with cameras, transmitters, and solar cells could be launched from Earth's orbit from a larger mothership, then accelerated towards Proxima Centauri by a kilometer-scale laser array on the ground. That array would be capable of accelerating the ships to about 20% of light speed, making the trip of 4.5 light years achievable in about 24 years. The time frame for launching these nanochips is somewhere around 20 to 30 years from now. As the main investor, Mr. Milner, stated, we're talking about doing this within the lifetime of a generation, rather than a few hundred years like people were thinking. But to do that, 
We need to disassociate ourselves from the vision of big spaceships. That will not happen. If this is possible, we might get to take a first look at an exoplanet firsthand. The idea is really interesting and would open up an entirely new domain of science to deal with ideas like this. But for now, we must be satisfied with the knowledge we have from our current technology. So there you are, guys. What do you think about these bizarre planets? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.